of Teacher Academy. We are glad to have you here. Uh, the main goal of this webinar, as you already know, is to facilitate entry and engagement in the course for those who are not familiar or less experienced with Teacher, Academy's, Teacher Academy online courses. We hope that after this webinar, you will have a clear understanding about how things work in Teacher Academy, how you can make the most out of this course, and how you can complete it successfully. To this end, we have asked you to post any practical questions you may have, and we will try to address them uh, during this webinar. Uh, during this webinar, we will also have some relevant to the topic discussions and we will present additional opportunities you can seize in this period. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and I would like also to inform you that if you have any additional questions during this live event, you can post them in the chat box that you see in the right corner. I see you're all already very active there and we will do our best uh, to respond to them. Uh, so, before starting, let us inter introduce ourselves first. So, my name is Efi Sardidou. I'm the Instructional Designer and Course Coordinator of this course and other courses of Teacher Academy of School Education Gateway. So, some of you may know me already. And I work as Pedagogical Officer in European SchoolNet, supporting uh, the pedagogical and professional development activities in Future Classroom Lab and other European SchoolNet uh, projects. But in this course, I'm not alone. I'm very glad to have with me in this course, Jose. Jose, would you like to introduce yourself? Of course. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jose Viñas. I'm a teacher from a high school in Coruña, Spain. I teach biology and I'm part of the group of experts in the Ministry of Science in Spain of experts about uh, citizen science. I train teachers and, uh, from primary and secondary school on hands-on activities and I'm a, I'm a communicator in a science TV program for uh, kids. So as you can see, I'm a teacher. Excellent. Thank you, Jose. I'm really happy to have you with me in this initiative. Here you can see also our Twitter handle. So if you want to follow us and connect with us, please feel free. And I also make a note that if you face any technical questions throughout this course, you can contact the Teacher Academy in the email you see there. But in this course, it's only it's not only me and you, Jose, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so in this yeah. course, we have many participants joining from all around Europe. You see here, uh, I've seen already here in the chat, we see people from Poland, from Greece, from Italy, from Spain, uh, from uh, Portugal, from Germany. And I'm really happy that we are so many different, uh, so many people from different countries here, Albania, North Macedonia, I'm just reading your, your chat now. So we are glad to have you uh, all here. Um, so before we start, uh, I would like to share some ideas and to, to be all on the same pa page and start reflecting about the topic, because our topic is how to address the global climate crisis in our classroom. So to this end, I would like you all, all, all of you to go to this, uh, to this website, to go to menti.com and use the code that you see here. I can add also the website to the chat so it might be easier for you here so go here use the code 313856 and try to reply with one or two uh, uh, words in this question so what is the first word or phrase that pops in your mind when you hear climate crisis i will give you one minute to reply to this question in this course, we are choosing the word crisis instead of change. So why we do that, especially in this period? The phrase climate change sounds rather passive and gentle when what scientists, what scientists are talking about is a threat for humanity. It's a bit weird to discuss about climate crisis in this period while we are experiencing a global health crisis, but the word crisis really shows the urgency of the situation, so that's why it has been chosen. So we see already your responses here. 
global warming, urgent change, a big problem, natural apocalypse, yes, well, we, we don't want to, to make you feel scared though, but uh, we will discuss uh, at the later stage while we are going through this presentation how, how this term can be defined actually and uh, how the period we are all experiencing is a bit more relevant to the climate crisis. So disaster, urgent, I, I cannot see all the words, high temperature, natural, health, yeah, you can continue posting your uh, your uh, answers there. I see already 77 people have uh, uh, answered. Uh, you, you can continue do that. Yeah, okay. Pollution. Excellent. Take action. I, I also see this response. Take action. I keep that for later because this is what we are going to do also with this course. We are teachers and we will try also to take action based on uh, what we can do in our own classrooms or in our teaching in general because now we are not in the classrooms. Okay, excellent. So, why to address the global climate crisis in your classroom? Cristiano Figueres, Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, back in 2011 said, it is alarming to admit that if the community of nations is unable to fully stabilize climate change, it will threaten where we can live, where and how we grow food, and where we can find uh, water. In other words, it will threaten the basic foundation, the very stability on which humanity has built its existence. So teachers face a demanding task. They need to understand what and how to teach about the complex forces driving climate change, as well as its impacts on well-being and development prospects. They need to show young people how, how they and their communities can respond to the threat and play a part in reducing the scope and severity of climate change. Teachers also need to play their part in taking forward a whole school response to climate change that includes addressing climate and sustainability across the, cur the curriculum. The audio is very bad. Okay, I'm sorry. Do you hear me well? Jose, do you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so there is some asking them if there is my problem or your problem. Okay, there's... maybe if you can mute while I'm speaking and I will mute when you okay. speak because okay. maybe we have the... Uh... Yeah. So that's actually what we will try to do in this course. Uh, this course will, he will help you to understand and make sense of the scientific evidence behind the crisis and the associated ongoing debates. More importantly, it will explore how you can approach the topic through projects and other activities in your classroom. So I have another question for you. And the, in the meantime, while you're replying to this question, I will also try to solve uh, the problem with the mic that I may have. So how relevant is this uh, learning? How relevant is learning about the climate crisis in this period, in a period where we are experiencing a, a health crisis? Let's see. Okay, I hope you see the results to your answers also, right? So 97% of the, 
of the participants think that uh, uh, it's quite relevant in this period as it is it, a, it is a serious issue to discuss and learn about, especially in this period. Some people are a bit neutral, so it is something to think about alongside other societal issues. But uh, I'm happy that you see that this topic is relevant in this period. So I'm continuing back to the presentation. What is happening in this period and why we are explicitly uh, referring to that? We can obviously we cannot ignore the current situation we are all experiencing. Right now, unfortunately, a threat is unfolding, which gives us a direct comparison with the climate crisis. What, so what make the two crises so different in terms of the threat itself and in terms of our response? Let's see. The coronavirus outbreak has triggered global alarm and the world jumped into action because it feels immediate. It's here today and if we don't act on it today, it's going to cost countless lives. So we moved on restrictions on travel, factories shutting down, quarantines, and we have seen a huge surge on scientific research around the topic. So we have seen big structural changes. Climate change also requires big, big structural, structural changes, which will take us years to put into place. So probably the best we can do about this topic is to put our efforts in stopping us getting to that point of crisis in the first place, instead of jumping into action when there is an extreme weather event, for example, which of course is necessary, what about putting our efforts to stop one of the biggest driving forces, climate change? For the topic of climate change, often public or political opinion view the necessary steps as not realistic. But how realistic was it for you to stay at home for more than one month some weeks ago? So why our responses to those two threats are so different? We can open a big discussion here, but I'm going to stick to our topic. So the kind of earth that future generations generations will inherit depends on what we are we are doing today. Actually, there is an additional connection between the two crises. The environmental changes caused by the coronavirus lockdown were first visible from space. In the first picture, for instance, NASA's Earth Observatory pollution satellites saw significant decreases, decreases in air pollution over China since the coronavirus outbreak began. And the second picture highlights that the water in the canals of Venice now looks clearer because there is less traffic on the canals. While we are staying at home, nature seems to be increasingly able to breathe more easily. That's a very concrete evidence that shows that climate change is caused by human activities. That's why we all have a duty to act to stop the climate getting worse. The actions we take now will determine what the world we live in will look like in 10, 20 or 50 years time. So education is critical in this regard. Actually, the current situation enables the change of perspective young people now have because of the COVID-19 crisis on what the crisis really means. It is not a faraway thing that happens to other people. It can be terrifying and require drastic measures. It also pri prioritizes the scientific perspective through which we should approach things like that. Both COVID-19 crisis and climate crisis are based on scientific facts. However, we have seen many conspiracy theories and fake experts regarding both topics. That's an area that we should focus more in our teaching. We should support our students to be critical thinkers and build an immunity to fake news. So we first need to understand and counter misinformation about climate change. And we can do that with many creative and inspiring ways. I'm sure that during this course, we will meet many of, the, of them coming out of you and your amazing practices. Cranky Uncle, for example, is the creation of the scientist and cartoonist John Cook, who uses cartoons, humor, and critical thinking to expose the misleading techniques of science denial and build public resilience against misinformation. To explain why and how some people reject scientific evidence, Cook created the, the character Cranky Uncle, the family member we all have, who thinks he knows better than the world scientists. You can have a look in the link here and find out more about this character and how it can, it, it can inspire you for more. 
Another interesting tool is this app named Spot the Fake, which has been developed as an outcome of the project Digital Resistance, funded by the European Union. Spot the Fake is an app for mobile phones designed to teach students how to recognize fake news and how to critically assess, assess information found online. You can download it in your device or try it online. On the last link, you will find relevant free educational resources and worksheets developed by WebWise for teachers that you might find useful. Please note that you will receive presenta the presentation, so it will be uploaded in our plat platform, so you will be able to visit the links as well. So let's go back to practicalities. Jose, would you like to explain us the course structure and tell us how we can succeed in this course? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, first of all, the course structure. Uh, we start, as you know, on, on, on 27th of April and we finish on, on the 3rd of June. So we have uh, different live events, uh, big live events that like, like this one. And we have the first one on the third, 13th of May at the, at the at six o'clock in the afternoon. And it's a Twitter chat. Uh, a Twitter chat, as you know, Twitter is a very popular social media platform to discuss these uh, kind of topics. And the topic of uh, climate crisis is very known in this, in this uh, platform. So we have a, a Twitter chat and we can address the global crisis uh, and the sustainability in our classrooms. And uh, after that, we have uh, even to hear your views. So, but the most important part of this chat is to know other people that is involved in this, uh, in this kind of topic and uh, to connect with them and to share our resources in this case. The next live event is in 28th of May at uh, five in the afternoon and it's a teacher meeting. It's an organized teacher meeting, but it's a, in an informal meeting. It's, it's to know another people who is working in this, in this uh, our adventure, in our course, uh, and it's uh, to know the good practice of these, of these people and to, to, to learn from our peers. I think that one of the most important parts of this course is to learn about uh, what is the, what is the uh, activities that other peers are, are doing in, in, in this topic like this, the climate crisis. And the last one is a school education gateway webinar that we are going to, to announce soon an expert and a teacher that is going to be involved in this one. So as you can see, the course structure has four modules. Uh, each module open every Monday, as you can see then. The last Monday is 28th of May. And you have uh, for each Monday, for each uh, module, you have seven days. Uh, after that, that seven days, you have ten days of grace period to finish the the taxes you if you want. So the first one is the module to understand the global climate crisis. Uh, the second module is to how we can teach about the global the, the climate tri uh, crisis and uh, how we are involved in the sustainability of the climate crisis in, in our classes. But the last one for me is one of the most important one is the, the module four is the how to implement this, uh, this climate crisis in our teaching. So because it's the most important one and, and the most uh, tricky one, uh, you can see which is the way that we can uh, be, uh, we can do this uh, four module. First of all, uh, we, are, uh, are going, we are going to submit our job, our work, and this job is going, this project is going to be assessed for uh, three peers, three of our colleagues in our, in this course. But we are going to review the, the, the activity or the projects of other three peers. So this is a, a big way to know how the other people is working on on this topic and how they implement in the classes or in the teaching in the teaching experience in this in this case so uh, the most important uh, question sometimes for the courses is how to certificate and uh, these are the four big tips for for this one the first one is visit all sections of the models of course the second one is be an active participant and engage in discussions in my case i i would like to say be very active 
of course, in and participant in and engaging discussions, and of course, develop and submit your classroom projects. And remember the deadline, 3rd of June, but if you do as soon as possible in the first seven days is perfect for because we are going to do the next activities, that is to review the, the activity of the other three peers. So the deadline is 3rd of June, but it's the, the last one, the last one day. Uh, remember that when you finish the course, you don't need, you can continue uh, sharing your, your experiences, but you can see the activities uh, of, the, of the course during the some days. One of the uh, things that you are going to do, one of the activities that we recommend, strongly recommend, is to uh, uh, to do a, a, to make a, a learning diary. If you want to know how is your evolution, if you want to know which is you, are you doing during this discourse, the best thing that you can do is to uh, do a learning diary. The learning diary is very useful at the end of the in the fourth module because you can see all the things that you do during the during the these uh, weeks so it's very easy uh, it's a, a resume or you can summarize all your activity during four weeks in this uh, learning diary if you want to know how to do this learning diary the best way is to follow this youtube video how participate in the discussions one of them is to follow uh, the padlet of course and the forum of the of the of the course, uh, the Padlet is very open. It's uh, it's a very good tool to to know and to practice with them. And the other the other one is uh, the social media, the Facebook group and and Twitter. Uh, you can you can see and you can follow the course even uh, in, in different in different tools or in different devices, and and you can be in contact with the other with other peers and colleagues. So um, the best thing that you can do now is to invite peers and, and friends to join because it's very, uh, very grateful to, to do this kind of uh, activities, this kind of, of courses with other people than you know. So they, it is open to, to continue and I recommend you that uh, you stay with other people. Indeed. So please invite your colleagues, invite your friends to join. It's uh, still very early on this course. We started on Monday. So share the news and invite your, fr your friends because learning together is better. Just to reply quickly to some questions that I read in the chat. So yeah, the mandatory activity of this course is in the module four, all the other activities of course, we highly recommend you to take part in the other activities as well, because you can exchange and inspire your colleagues. But the only mandatory activity is in the fourth modules. Social media are not necessary, but of course, we have a Facebook group and we have a Twitter. Uh, so it's also good to, to be there so you keep an eye on what's going on there. And regarding the live events, you can find more information on the live event section in the platform. So before we leave, and before I give you some time to, to ask any other questions you may have, uh, I'm keeping a surprise for you. So I didn't present Matt at the beginning. Now it's the, the right time to do so. Because as part of this course, we also uh, suggest you another MOOC, another MOOC that could work as a complementary resource to your learning and to actually support your efforts to, to improve your knowledge and practices in this uh, topic. So I would like to introduce you uh, Matt Larson Doe. Matt is education manager at WWF in United Kingdom. He developed the educational program that accompanied the Our Planet Netflix series, which includes the popular natural ID app SEEK, and it's a combined resource pack, the Our Planet Lab local action on biodiversity toolkit. Matt is chair of social socio-educational charity HVP Nepal United Kingdom. Matt, could you please turn on your camera and your microphone so we can welcome you in this uh, Hello, presentation as well. The sound works. I can see the little thing coming up Excellent. from the microphone, so I think it is working. It's working perfect. So the Amazing. stage is yours. Thank you yours. so much for Please. giving me uh, this this small platform. Um, I'm absolutely delighted uh, that this 
um, MOOC that you've developed is coming out um, so close to uh, the launch of ours. They really are very complimentary and we'll be doing the same thing to people who come um, to our course. We'll be signposting uh, this fantastic course on uh, educating the climate crisis. Um, uh, as you'll see, it really does fit um, perfectly together. Um, so uh, I am the education manager at WWF UK. However, um, as, as you heard previously, I worked on the global education program associated with the Our Planet series. Um, that was a Netflix series that some of you may have seen. Um, if you haven't, because you don't have Netflix, it is now available uh, for free on YouTube um, and it's a fantastic resource for the classroom um, or to direct your students to watch and also for your own interest. Um, if you have seen the series you'll know that its focus uh, was not on one particular issue but on how the planet works as a living system. Um, so it's, it shows how the different biomes of the planet all have a role to play uh, to create the conditions for life, and then how human activity in each of those biomes and uh, the way that we live generally um, is actually preventing the planet from uh, supporting life, from supporting us in the future. So climate change is therefore one of the issues that the series deals with, and it's an incredibly important issue, and it's obviously the one uh, which most people are aware of these days uh, when it comes to environmental crisis. Um, and so it's a fantastic place to start and it's also a fantastic uh, opportunity uh, to engage students in thinking about issues that go beyond climate change. Um, so the course that we've developed is called Education for a Sustainable Planet um, and it's built around some of the content uh, that was developed for the Our Planet series. So some beautiful video footage um, that was shot for the series and also for the website, ourplanet.com. And it also tries to make a similar point that there is a living system, our planet, uh, that we need to support um, and uh, enable to continue to function if we want to survive uh, for the years ahead. So that means that it takes one step back from focusing on a specific issue like climate change and looks at the very broadest issue and the very broadest issue is that we are not living within our means we are not living sustainably um, and uh, at WWF we believe that this is the principle that we really need to underpin um, everything that students do around uh, geography and science um, and any environmental issue that they discuss or study at school um, because it's not just about understanding the causes of one particular issue, it should be about the principles that can prevent us from causing issues in the first place and breaking the living system that supports us on our planet. Um, so what sustainability and an understanding of sustainability means in practice is that we mustn't just think about the way we need to change um, the way we live, we need to actually change the way we think because we need to be able to look at everything that we do now but also anything that we might do in the future that we currently don't do um, and we need to think about whether or not it is sustainable whether or not it's going to cause problems whether it's contributing to climate change or whether it's causing another problem um, and think about whether or not it's actually a sensible course of action and if students can be led to understand how to think according to the principles of sustainability, um, then that means they will be equipped, whatever they want to do later in life, to do it in a way that contributes to a sustainable planet, to a sustainable future for our planet. So um, I, I've already mentioned our planet because I thought this slide would have gone, but uh, the series itself, um, as I mentioned, uh, takes you on a journey through uh, the different um, biomes of our planet and, and talks about how uh, damaging one biome leads to problems across other parts of the planet. And so with climate change, um, there's a really important um, side of it, which is that um, it is contributing to problems in the natural world as well as dangers 
uh, to human life, um, but also our damage to the natural world that has nothing to do with climate change. Um, so our habitat destruction, um, the impact of um, land use for farming and so on, that in itself um, is uh, stopping the planet from being able to stabilize the climate. Um, so it's not just about the things we're doing that are directly causing climate change, it's about biodiversity loss contributing to climate change and making the planet uh, less able to deal with it. Um, so we want to encourage students to uh, recognize the links between issues. And so one of the key ones being the link between climate change and biodiversity loss. Um, so we know that uh, students are aware of climate change. We know that they are striking on Fridays. Um, because this is something which is scaring them, something which is worrying them, something which threatens their future. And we don't just want them to be angry, we don't just want them to see activism as the only way to bring positive change, because it shouldn't just be about stopping what we're doing that's damaging the planet, it should be about working positively towards a better form of life on our planet. And that's what this MOOC uh, that we've developed is all about. It's about thinking about the whole system and underpinning all decisions with the principles of sustainable thinking and system thinking, so seeing the connections. Um, just like with, your, with the, uh, the climate change education course, um, we promote a whole school approach. So it really does complement well. Anything that you learn um, from one course uh, will relate to uh, what you want to apply from the other course. Uh, so we talk about uh, how schools are not just ways for students to gain skills and knowledge. Um, they are uh, places within a community that have an impact themselves. They have grounds, so they are themselves sites which can have biodiversity impact, good or bad. Um, they are opportunities to connect with the wider community the families of students, the families of staff, the suppliers that bring food and other supplies into the school. All of these um, are ways to influence uh, wider society. So a school um, has a huge potential impact, huge potential positive impact. So in our course, um, we try to encourage all educators and principals to think about not only whether or not they are teaching positive values and teaching uh, the, the facts and the science behind the issues that our planet faces, but also whether they are demonstrating the principles of sustainability and good practice environmentally by the way the school is actually uh, working itself and um, by the way that the school is run and managed. <clears throat> and schools um, are not just places um, which can do positive, uh, can do things well or can do things badly and can set a good example or not. Um, they're also convening places. Um, so schools and colleges are uh, uh, incredibly important hubs of the community and they can drive individual action by students, but also they can bring together individual actions, not just um, by students, but also by the wider community because of the place that they, they hold in a community um, and they can drive community action. And of course, that's where it starts to scale up and have more social impact and it can lead to influence on business and even governments. And it's those uh, big changes we believe um, can drive the huge changes that are needed at the planetary level. Um, and as a wider point, this is something which the MOOC also deals with, is how um, everything uh, that we teach our students about sustainability and about the environment should be connected to how change happens. There should be political literacy alongside environmental literacy. So this understanding of um, how we can bring change is a really good way of countering the helplessness and the fear um, that the scale of crisis um, can cause in young people. So um, the MOOC um, in its uh, essential form is a course in taking a whole school approach to education for sustainable development. It has five modules um, bookended by an introduction and some uh, resource and signposts which will include uh, this climate change education course 
um, and uh, it will share some of the videos that are going to, you're going to experience if you if you take this climate change education course because there is such crossover. So you might find that some modules you can really power through, but each module should take about an hour to complete. Um, and you can do them in a different order if there's a particular area of interest. Um, and when you complete all the modules, uh, you'll have um, you'll be able to claim your course uh, completion certificate. But there'll also be a badge for each module because they are important concepts in their own right. Um, so as you can see, it covers uh, the importance of education for sustainable development. How uh, this idea of sustainable thinking should permeate everything that we do and the way that we think. Module two is all about systems thinking, connecting issues to issues and connecting uh, impacts to uh, causes. Um, module three is about uh, learning in an active and participatory way so that these things come alive in the classroom and also go beyond the classroom. Uh, four is all about uh, schools themselves um, being exemplars of sustainability and demonstrating uh, sustainable practice so that people involved in the school community live it as well as learning it. And module five is about um, what you can do to empower young people uh, who are introduced to these concepts and to these skills um, to actually bring about positive social change themselves. Uh, and I just wanted to mention a couple of really complimentary resources um, that are signposted from our course anyway. Um, but this uh, Our Planet's Future Summit toolkit is available from WWF UK's website, but also ourplanet.com. Um, and it's a, a really good way of doing what I just described, bringing together uh, different issues and different biomes um, so that you can explore the connection between them, um, but also um, bringing political literacy uh, into the picture with environmental literacy. Um, it's a role played uh, international summit so uh, students take on different roles, either world leaders or representatives of different biomes. So they're there as environmental experts giving evidence. And, and there's a big discussion, lots of presentations. So each student uh, researches something and presents on that, but also hears all of the other issues. And then there's a big round table debate. The world leaders get the final say, um, but they have to think about what they've learned and how they can make that into a plan for the future of our planet. But it's trying to make sure that no issue is seen in isolation, that everything is seen as connected. And then the other thing I wanted to mention, which uh, I think Effie already mentioned, was um, our citizen science stream is all about um, looking at uh, real world um, landscapes, real world biodiversity, um, so that students can gain uh, some hands on experience of uh, these subjects. So we have this fantastic app. Seek, which is all about being able to identify the wildlife around you. Um, and that's our way of um, making sure that in learning about uh, these issues, in learning about the, the big planet-wide uh, crisis, um, students have something practical that they can go out and do. They can use this app to explore their local wildlife, see changes in the landscape, uh, changes in the ecosystem over time, um, but also they can be citizen scientists. They can take wildlife observations and upload them to help scientists monitor biodiversity. So it's a real practical STEM experience um, that also means that they have um, a practical way of um, relating what they learn about in the classroom to uh, the, the landscape around them. So I just wanted to leave you with the five principles that underpin uh, our course. Um, they'll all be things that you dive into in more detail if you can take the time to do it. Uh, so the first is that as educators, uh, we can teach the connections. We can make sure that students do not um, just learn the science of a particular cause and effect, and um, that they actually understand um, that everything that we do that has an impact on the world um, is connected to um, everything else. And one, uh, one change um, to the planet uh, leads to many other changes. Secondly, we can foster sustainable values. We don't just have to teach the science behind why they're important. We can help uh, students and staff, of course, put them into practice. Thirdly, we can nurture a connection to nature so that uh, students become uh, more able to see changes in their own environment and more sensitive uh, to the impact of their own actions. Outdoor classroom, 
um, and forest school and all of these other um, methodologies that are available to us um, that um, help us to get students to spend some time um, exploring and understanding better the natural world. Fourth, we can support and empower students. We don't just have to be uh, leading them, we can uh, stand behind them and boost them if there's something that they want to do. Um, so giving them a role um, in defining what changes might be made within the school and also helping them um, to make the connections that they need to take action themselves. Those are ways we can really um, lead to these principles and this knowledge becoming something real to students, something they can use and therefore something that they believe in and that drives them forward. And lastly, we can lead the way. We can lead by example, both in our individual lives, but also um, in the practice of the school. So I will just pop into the chat a link to uh, the page we've got on our website. The MOOC's going to be going live within the next two weeks. It was meant to be live already, but with uh, COVID-19, things have slipped a little bit. Um, I'm sure we're not the only um, uh, people to feel the impact on that. Um, but if you go to this website, um, you'll be able to sign up to receive an update when it goes live. Um, and uh, I really hope that you'll find it a very useful complement to uh, the climate change education course. Um, it's also free. Um, and as I said, it is um, it does come with certification. So thank you very much. Excellent, Matt. Thank you very much for presenting this course. I we highly recommend you participants to join. So please make your agenda, your weekly agenda, to save some time, both for the climate change MOOC and the MOOC that uh, Matt just uh, presented to you, because there are two great opportunities now in this period, which are both free and are very well prepared for you to equip you with the right knowledge and skills and attitude that you need in order to include these elements in, in your teaching. So, um, uh, I think we have answers answered to most of your questions you had so far during the presentation. If you have any other question, please post it here now. It's the last opportunity. Um, the recording, as we said, will be available in our platform. We, we have seen also some more content re related questions, but uh, we are not going to reveal everything from now at this very moment. So stay tuned and we hope that until the end of the courses, you will have all your questions answered. So since you don't have any other questions, I'm going to close this webinar. I'm going to thank my two great gentlemen for being here and presenting their practices. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Matt. Um, and thank you all of you, 215, 20 people that you saved this time slot for to spend it with us in this webinar. I hope you are enjoying the course so far. I hope you find the first module of the course useful. Stay tuned interact with your colleagues, take as much as you can, inspire each other, and enjoy this uh, learning journey. Have a nice evening, everybody, and take care.